Hey, it's Dr. Javen talking about Bartonella today. We're we'll talking about where you're getting it, what some symptoms are of it. Tonight, I'll be going through treatments, tricks, tips, what I see, what I use to work with it, and any other details you guys want to see. But uh, after my 48 hour hiatus, my little break so that I could rest up, recover from just working all the time, and uh, here I am again, we're getting started. So, with Bartonella, it can come from so many different avenues. So you can get it from ticks, fleas, mites, all the different biting insect vectors, just like you can with Lyme or Babesia. It is the, about 28% of chronic Lyme patients in one study did show for Bartonella. So you can get it from all of those places, but you can also get it from your animals at home. So it's called cat scratch fever because, well, it looks like you can get scratches across your skin and if you have a cat, it is one of the common things that comes from the cat across into humans. So I already went over that one symptom of the scratches. Now this doesn't look like scratches like when you've grown too big for muscles or you get across your, your chest here, anything like that. It is ones that typically are on your lower back or your abdomen. So they're, they're, they're lower down. Often I see them across the lower back and they can even be purplish intent or color. So that's a big one. There's also a lot of neurological symptoms. So because it's a bacteria and it has a lot of neurotoxicity to it, getting through to the brain, you have rage, you have anxiety and depression. You can get fever and headaches, right? So those are all very common with this. I've seen night sweats, a lot of swollen lymph nodes around the neck. So I've seen neck tightness come with this. Also inflammation around the entire body or body pain, fibromyalgia-like symptoms. So those are some of the common things that I see with Bartonella. Now, I've seen somebody who we worked all the way through it and they had gotten rid of all these symptoms, got bit by their cat, and all of a sudden, poof, big flare, red finger, because it was a bit here, and then these symptoms all started coming back later on. So yes, you can be reinfected and have symptoms come back. And it was inflammation systemically. It was anger. She was ragey. And then, again, that swelling, anxious, headache, fatigue symptoms, right? So those are some things to think about. There are at least 12,000 people that are documented positive each year. But we all know that testing for these types of infections is very poor, especially for those people who have chronic levels of it and don't have the immediate symptoms. So for her with, with being bit, I was like, get over, get some testing. Let's see if we can't get a positive on this right now as this reinfection. Um, but for those who have chronic levels who have these symptoms, so hard to get a test on. I'm going to talk about where to get those tests, some of the different things that I do with this later on tonight. So stay tuned for that. Here we go. As we're all, we're all trying to learn everything and we're all trying to get down to the nitty gritty of these details. We're going to be continuing on each day throughout the next week or so of different infections that can be associated with Lyme, chronic infection, chronic illnesses like fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, IBS, which those are some of my favorites because those are all diagnoses of symptoms that don't tell you why you have those symptoms. They simply just tell you that you have a symptom and nobody knows why. Well, some of these things are the reasons why. Tune in later. Tune in the rest of the week. Invite your friends in. Tag them in our group. Make sure that everybody can get this knowledge if you know anybody with chronic symptoms because let's all stick together and get well.